Thank you so much for downloading the episode today on the show. Paula and I are back and we're recapping Vegas. We didn't end up in jail, nor did we end up in a hospital, but there were a ton of awkward moments from planes and trains and Ubers and all the fun stuff that Vegas allows. Thank you so much. Shoplipandclip.com. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. Hey, hey, Dick. Thanks a lot. Paula. Leave your blinds open. Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 322. Uh, <laughs> hey hey it's voting day <laughs> yeah oh god i completely forgot about that Paula. i'm a mail-in ballot person so i wonder oh. if i can drop it off you can okay yeah california's same day registration same day voting so i helped my 18 year old fill out her ballot she was funny because she came to she goes well i pretty much filled it out but I, if I didn't know anything about it, I just didn't vote at all. And I said, well, that's fair. A lot of people do that. I said, but mm-hmm. is it just because you didn't want to read? Because was, there was a lot of propositions. Right. And I said, here's my rule of thumb. <laughs> if it's on the ballot because of a petition, I vote no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not always, but mostly. It's be, and if you, I said, if you read the summaries of each proposition, you can pretty much tell really which way to go because if there's one side that says if there's a lot of anger and a lot of exclamation points you can pretty much guarantee that this is on here because of you know this is not a well thought out proposition but if you if it's concise and it's got facts and it's got a plan you can make an educated choice whether you like it or not you can decide so we went through most of them and She's like, I really want to decide who's going to be on the school board. <laughs> I wow. said, good. I go, you should. She said, anybody who said, I have been on the PTA for five years, I voted no. And I said, I'm <laughs> with you, girl. <laughs> I voted no on all those bitches <laughs> because there were no men. It was all women. But it was kind of cool helping her fill out her ballot. It was really neat. How exciting. Because she wasn't going to do it. And I said, you registered to vote and everything, and you're not going to vote? She goes, I don't know. And I said, just do it. God. I go, it's just like doing your homework or your taxes or whatever. It's something that you should do. Oh, that's, if you don't- that's motivating. Your homework <laughs> and your taxes. And she's just like, geez. It's just like getting a pelvic exam. You don't want to do it, but you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway. All right. So obviously we, our voices are down three octaves because we are exhausted because we survived our girls trip to Vegas. Yes. We actually came back in one piece. Mm-hmm. We made our flights. We uh, did not lose a lot of money. Not too. You didn't lose a whole lot, did you? I think I lost like $65. That's good. That's pretty good for Vegas. You know, I don't know about you, Paula, but I had a lot of sugar plum fairies dancing in my head when we were flying out on friday yeah me too (laughs) i really thought that it was going to be like this glamorous you know weekend like i don't know what i was thinking and that's just not the way it went (laughs) well i think like we agreed on the way home if we have solid plans then it will be like funner the next time yeah now i want to say that I had a really good time. We had a good time. No, we did. Nobody ended up in the doctor's office or the or jail. No. You know, it was nothing like that. But it was just, you know, the reality is, Paula, is that we are not partiers like that. When we party, it just, it organically occurs. And mm-hmm. it, it can be pretty much anywhere. To actually go to a party city, not the store, but the, 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 the town of Vegas, <laughs> and not really know what to do. I mean, we were wandering around like little kindergartners because we just don't know how to do it, right? Right. To kick things off, the travel part was interesting, to say the least. I have never had bad experiences on airplanes. You know, when you see those viral videos or you see people with their big dogs and they take massive dumps in the walkway, I've never experienced that. Have you ever experienced anything like that? No, but I hate flying. I know you do. And you know what? You did really well considering. Now, on the way there, did you take something? I may have taken 
a bigger pill than I normally do. Okay, so, so you were somewhat relaxed. I was relaxed. I wasn't, you know, but here's the thing is when I fly, I just resolve myself to death. <laughs> so yes, just assume I'm going to die. See, now, like I wrote the kids all notes and put them on their pillow when I yes, left. Yes. You were just like, well, if I don't make it out, this is what I want for you in life. You know, and like the week leading up, I'd like try to do special things with each of them. I don't you know. You were sure I, that you were going to plummet to your death. Like, I, that's how I feel when I fly. So I just. Yeah, you know, I, I get it. I actually, I'm pretty morbid too. Like when, like Daryl's, he's going to be traveling. I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to cook his very favorite foods. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've got to make sure that I remember what he feels like and smells like and, you know, all that stuff, because this could be it. This could be the last time I see him, you know, right. it's that's true. So we get to Daryl was really sweet because he knows you and I are both very anxious. And here's the here's the bad part of being the older sister other than aging first. I have to be kind of in charge <laughs> and I don't I I'm not a fan simply because. I'm usually not required to be in charge, you know? Well, I didn't necessarily think it that way because I've traveled a bit more mm-hmm. than perhaps you have right. at, without a partner. So I don't know. I was I've pre- traveled, when I worked, I was traveling all over the country all the time. Oh, okay. Because I was prepared just to do my own thing and like, you know, do my bags and tickets and stuff like that because... You were on the phone with Daryl quite a bit. Okay, first of all, (laughs) let's not forget that Daryl had to teach you, and I as well, had to get your your luggage sticker on because you didn't know how to do it. I always do those wrong. Even though there's a giant piece of writing that says, (laughs) don't uh, fix it here. And I'm like, you're like, I don't know how to do this. And I'm like, Paula, it says it right there. Slap. That's how you do it. Normally, I don't. I'll just take him to the way station, and I'm like, I can't figure this out. (laughs) Yeah. So we he drops us off. He goes on the tram with us and all that stuff. And here's the thing with Daryl. He knows that I'm not inept. I'm very capable. It's not even that. What it is, is we are very awkward. And, yes. it, and we really are. And, and there are certain places where awkward is endearing and funny. And then there are other places that will get you arrested and a it's, cavity search. It's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't do that. And, you know, so he gets us to the security, you know, whatever. And we get in line all is well. Security's short. You know, we were in our line immediately. And I immediately, I hand over to the TSA agent. I just hand her my passport, and my boarding pass as if, because, you know, you're supposed to give that showing, like give them your ID and show them the ID. Yeah. I just hand her the book. And she's like, um, all right. <laughs> she starts thumbing through the passport looking for my photo. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I am so sorry. I apologize. This is so inappropriate. I'm so sorry. She's like, it's all right. So and then we're in line to get into that thing, that capsule, that giant white capsule where you they spin you around. You know, they spin around. I know. It's weird. It's not the air one where they blow air on you. <laughs> Ew, I've never had that. Oh, I have. This is the one where you get in, it looks like a big gel capsule, and you stand in it, and then the glass spins, and I assume they're doing a very quick 360 on your ass. Right. And then you get out, and if everything's good, you walk out. Now, I have definitely been patted down before, and I don't remember why, and I'm like, I don't have any, I don't even have a nip, nipple earring or anything, you know, I'm good. But I get in, and I have my hands in the air like a goober, And the lady goes, oh, God. And I'm like, what? And she's like, it needs to calibrate. You need to get out. I was like, oh, my God, great. And then I get out and you're all, I knew you'd break it. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, we have not even left Sacramento. We have been on our own for a grand total of four minutes. And it's already starting. And then so she goes, she gets us to go through this more, you know, an- archaic one like antiquated you're right metal detector and the some, old style and so she goes okay so just come in around here and we'll just snake it through while this is calibrating because it must take quite a while or something because she was redirecting the whole line so i'm like all right so i walk through and some two-ton tessie decides to push her ass through as if she's gonna cut us off like like she's gonna get away with it i was so mad <laughs> i was so mad and then the tsa lady, she's like no no, she's going first. I'm like, oh my God, I love this. Thank TSA. God. Yeah. 
I think I just looked at her kind of like, what are you doing? Yeah. And the thing is, is that is not the place to get lippy. It's not like I could turn and go, bitch. You know, so you're just like, you kind of just have to be a little passive and let it let things happen. I was so mad at that woman. And so when we sat down to put our shoes on and I said, did you you see that? You're like, (laughs) oh, I saw it. I saw it. I was like, okay. (laughs) God. And then the only thing that really sucked on the plane there is it was a full plane. Right. Everything we did was full. There was no shortness of crowds. I wonder if they always have packed planes on the weekends to Vegas. Oh, I would imagine. I would think that's pretty common. That's probably why they jack up their prices. Yes. And then the only thing, and I got nervous too, is that we were on our super long runway. and It took extraordinarily amounts of time for that plane to take off. And of course, everybody has their shades down, so nobody will, you know, lift them up to see what the hell is going on. I mean, I did feel like we were going at a very high rate of speed and not taking off. And I said, "Are we just gonna pl- are we just gonna plow into something on the freeway?" I was thinking, at this "I'm point? like, what's at the end here? Cornfields? Or, you know, <laughs> what is it?" It did. It did feel that way. I was waiting for the jets to start reversing because I'm just like, "Okay, I'm like, we're either taking off or we're gonna stop. So something's gonna happen. Something's here. gonna happen very soon." And you're you don't realize. How how fast you're going until you're speeding down the runway and not taking off suddenly yeah. you're going we're going like 400 miles an hour for finally the thing you know lifted and i was just like oh thank god phew that's how laguardia is though god or i've been at laguardia it's it, it feels harrowing i was so glad to be out of that that airport it was it was scary <laughs> For sure, that takeoff is scary. And I, I, of course, I remember turning to you going, do you realize that this is the one where Sully was on and they ended up plunging into the Hudson River? He's like, Jamie, that's not going to happen. I'm like, you don't know that. He goes, it is July. There is nothing. I go, there are birds all the time. It could happen. He's like, it's not going to happen. And he retired. So, I mean, it's not even like we're going to get him. I said, we don't have Sully right now. We don't know what's going on. He's like, all right, calm down. We are fine. We are in the air. And I said, I won't feel comfortable until we are out of here. He's like, well, it, it's going to happen eventually. Don't worry. But we did not have that kind of panic. You and I actually chit-chatted. We had a very, <laughs> we had a very nice man sitting next to you. With headphones on. With headphones on because this is an awkward moment. But this entire show is an awkward moment. So we might as well just get into it. Here's our ugly and awkward weekend of the week. <laughs> So do you want me to tell you? Yes, tell me, tell me. So we were sitting there talking and, you know, being the the (laughs) diet freaks we are, they offered us pretzels. Well, one, I can't eat pretzels. Right. And two, I don't imagine you would eat pretzels. I don't. And so the guy next to us, she offered him pretzels and I guess he took his pretzels. And then she said, well, it's your lucky day. You're going to get, you know, three pretzels. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he had his headphones on and I looked at him and I'm like, you're welcome. (laughs) You know, just being like catty or something like that. Well, he didn't even see or hear me because he had his headphones on. (laughs) So you were like talking to a wall. And then I saw him and he had the three bags of pretzels and he he goes to, to hand them to you and you had already obviously declined them. And because he wasn't listening to any of the people... He was trying to find a place to put them. So he thought about putting them in the pocket in front of him. And he thought, no, that's not cool because that's what bad people do. So he mm-hmm. just sat there with three bags of pretzels and didn't eat any of them. I think he did offer them to me. He's like, you sure you don't want any pretzels? Oh, did he? Oh, I'm, okay. like, uh, I'm like, no, thanks. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're welcome. You know, you did a lot of that this weekend where you were talking to random people and they didn't know why. <laughs> you did that friendly, a lot. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. You did that a lot. But... <laughs> We finally got out of there, thank God. And yes. we, we went downstairs. Now, as we've discussed uh, preparing for this trip, uh, Daryl and I um, upgraded our stay at the hotel to get transportation to and from the airport. And when you do that, you get uh, either a Cadillac or a limo or something really fancy. 
And we were excited about it because we were going to see they use iPads now. Back in the old days, they used paper, but now they mm-hmm. have the big iPads with your name on it, and you can you can find your name easily. And then we wanted to take a picture because we thought it'd be really right. fun to show it. And of course, we wandered around. We got our luggage. We wandered around that entire area, and there was not one laptop with our name on it. And I was getting really concerned because. We actually had to confirm twice that we had upgraded our stay at this hotel. And they they never noted it. Well, and there's usually like 20 people that, or there were like 20 people with iPads. Some of them were just using their phones and neither of us can see anything. (laughs) And so we're like rolling our luggage up the line, just trying to like see our names. And they're just, it's kind of. I don't even it's know. A little, it's awkward. I felt like we were at a brothel picking at women. I agree. <laughs> I thought the same thing. And I'm like, why would you put this on your freaking iPhone 4? No one can see this. You're just, you're holding your phone in front of you as if we can see font size 14 as we're wandering <laughs> around the airport. It was so ridiculous. And so finally I called Daryl and I said, hey, there ain't no limo here. And um, I'm fine taking an Uber, but we we shouldn't be doing this. Right. And so he's calling and then I get a call. Hi, this is Cody. Um, I'm running a little late, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, Jesus. And I said, oh, they're running late. And the whole point, like if when we left the airport, if we had been late for that ride, they charge us like $8 a minute if we're late. So it's not a joke. They are serious about be on time. We'll pick you up on time, blah, blah, blah. So... That's why I was like, we have to get out there because I didn't want to miss the guy. Right. Um, So anyway, I'm like, well, what do I charge for being 30 minutes late? Because I can't charge you money. So come to find out that guy, Cody, who showed up, looked like my ex. (laughs) He was wearing cowboy boots, a black suit and a white button up shirt with silver tips on the collar. He had like four (laughs) giant silver rings on. Now, listen, Cody was nice. Yeah, he was. He was really nice. And he took our luggage. He didn't make us carry it ourselves. But he was clearly, this was not his thing. He was doing somebody a favor. He was a contractor. <laughs> Something. And he was laughing at us when we were talking to back about UFC and stuff. He was he was laughing at us because we were being funny. Oh, right. Because we can't help ourselves. We If we have even one person as an audience, we're, we're talking and making people laugh. We can't help we're- ourselves. <laughs> but we're funny. <laughs> so laughing about how we'll be the old moms in the corner and the young whores will be like, oh, how cute. I, I can't. I hope when I'm old, I do this, too, with my friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we were making fun of ourselves and he was kind of laughing at us, which was fine. I gave him like 10 bucks because I didn't, you know, of course, Daryl had to tell me. I'm like, I'm like, do I have to tip everybody? He's like, well, I mean, the people who drive you around, you should. I'm like, OK, cool. But he's in the car and he gets a call on his little CB radio and he's like, yeah, no problem. I I'll, I don't have a problem helping you out. And I'm like, oh, gee, well, thanks so much for helping us out. I didn't realize it was such an imposition. You know, I was irritated. And yeah. so we get there and the check in was fairly flawless. And now, did you like the room? <laughs> we upgraded to a suite and I thought it's just like in the movies. You're like nothing but the best. you right. Spare yeah. no expense, but you have a fear of heights. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, we were on the 29th floor. So we were on floor 29 out of 30 and or 35. With uh, panoramic windows. Very, so. very few solid walls. <laughs> they were all glass. It, it didn't feel like you were going to fall off or anything like that. Now, like if we had had a balcony or something, that would have been a different story. Oh, you would have been like, I'm not going out there. I would not have gone out no, there. No, I would make you. But the I think the, the best part of that room was the um, bathroom because the bathroom was kind of – it's on the corner of the suite. They're called corner suites. And so <laughs> – But the ultimate corner is the bathroom, which is every wall except for the toilet, which is closed into a frosted glass window, is glass. So no matter what you're doing, you can see the entire strip and the entire mountain range in Vegas. It's stunningly beautiful, unless you're afraid of heights, of course. So I took three baths while we were there Mm -hmm. at night because it's unbelievable to see all the lights and everything in that tub 
You did not. <laughs> no, you were hogging in the bathtub. No, I'm just kidding. You're a liar. <laughs> I begged you to take a bath. No, I don't know what I was doing. You're like, well, the shower's really nice. <laughs> I liked the shower. I think I fell asleep at one point. So yeah. that's when you were taking your baths. You d- oh, and- oh, I mean, when you slept for three hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I took my bath. Well, excuse me. We had just walked eight miles. <laughs> I know. So we get there Friday night. We enjoy the suite. And then we decided we've learned some lessons from this trip for sure. Yes. Travel day is not the day to have plans that that will prevent you from doing anything the next night, I guess is my point. So right. we had found a show that we wanted to go to down near Fremont Street, which is the old part of Vegas. It's where all the original casinos and all of that are. And it was a little comedy show. We ha- I have some friends in Vegas that were going to be there. And so we were we planned on going. We get all dressed up. We've got EDM music piped through because there's TVs in every room of this suite because there's two rooms, two bathrooms. It's amazing. We were having such a good time. We got cocktails before we came upstairs. It was super fun. So we're getting all ready, looking hot, and we take off. We get into our Uber. We get to the location. Now, I, I think you need to talk about this because we had a wonderful Uber driver. I don't remember his name. Do you remember his name? No, it was like it started with a J. Though start, no, it started with a T. Oh. It was like ta, ta, to, to. No, I don't know. Okay, this was a long time ago. <laughs> it was four whole days ago. It was like Tomac or something. Uh, what was his name? Anyway, so friendly, super nice, really nice. And so. This place that we went to doesn't have a parking lot where the venue is. The parking is somewhere else. And so there's nowhere to pull in. And now we are in our our Vegas finest, which is come do me heels, thigh high <laughs> boots, you know, you know, really sexy dresses, low cut whatevers. We look great because after the show, we're going to go do it upright and have a good time. So (laughs) this was just supposed to be our first stop of the evening. So he goes, this is it. And I see the 400. I go, oh, this is it. I'm like, God, the show. And we were a little late, but not that late. And I'm like Like 15 minutes. But by that point. Yeah. And so go. So (laughs) go ahead and you can tell the rest. So he dropped us off and he's like, all right, bye. And then I told Jamie, I'm like, I'm like, this doesn't look right. I'm like, people are going to think we're prostitutes. And I'm like, no, they're not. And so after the Uber drove off, like within seconds, someone's just like, how much? I couldn't believe it. I and couldn't I was, believe it. And I'm like, we've got to get out of here. <laughs> and so we start walking, of course, the opposite way of where we need to be going. No, we started going. And then I said, you know what? It's going to be around this corner. I just know it. And we just passed. around the river bend. <laughs> yeah so. just around the river bend and there's the on-ramp to the freeway <laughs> and and more people and then this guy and this girl in this mustang like slow down and just start staring at us and i'm just like are they gonna like proposition us or, or are we on their turf or I, what's going on i don't know but i when i finally turned and looked and they were eyeing us it was one of two things they either wanted to purchase us <laughs> or they were angry that we were on her corner i didn't know which And it wasn't a nice part of town, by the way. I mean, not at night. And I mean, Fremont Street in in its little enclosed area is fine. But outside of that, you don't want to venture. No. And so I was like, we're walking and you're like, Jamie, this is this is starting to feel really unsafe. Yeah. Like I've told you in the past, something happens when I'm in potentially dangerous situations. I suddenly am not afraid, which is probably (laughs) bad. But I just was like, no one's going to fuck with me. And so we're walking, and of course, we walk by a guy who's clearly on meth, and he can barely walk, and he's wobbling around, and he says something. I have, I, it was inaudible to me. Yeah. And I look through the back, and I go, okay, there's clearly an event going on. We're just on the wrong side, so we need to go back around. And you're all, Jamie, this is going nowhere. And I go, you're right, you're right. This is the freeway. We need to turn around. <laughs> so now we've got to walk all the way back. But when we got out of the car, and you're all, Jamie, people are going to think we're prostitutes. It was like a movie. And I said, no, they won't. How much? I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Thank God. Thank God we found a security guard. (laughs) 
he was barely. At first, when I saw him ahead, I'm like, is he a security <laughs> guard or is he just got some guy standing there? I, I don't want to ask him for help. <laughs> I seriously thought that he had baby pillaged a goodwill and stolen those clothes and he was just standing there playing he i had, had a baton think- he had a baton and i'm like can i ask him for help or is he gonna beat me is he gonna mug <laughs> us I don't know seriously it was rough it was rough and so i'm like i so then we're walking and we're like hey where's the entrance and he he motions over so we keep walking and then like like the gates of heaven this place is huge. I'm like, okay, so we clearly just went the wrong way. Right. There's Christmas lights. There's music. There's a bar right there. It's like, okay. So we, luckily we got right in. We give the lady our ticket. And I look inside my bag and my wallet is not there. And I thought I left it in the Uber. I was sure I left it in the Uber. I was hysterical. You were so calm. You were so calm. You're like, it's going to be fun. I'm like, it's not okay. My passport's in there. I was so afraid. How am I going to get home? Like, I have an ID, but that was in there, too. And all of my cash, my American Express card was in there. And I said, I'm an idiot. I was so mad at myself. And then I started to panic because, you know, Uber's in Vegas. I mean, some some fool would go and go, oh, what's this cute little pink passport thing open it up and see a wad of cash and an american express and go oh my god it's our lucky night right (laughs) i really did i was so afraid so then we called and had the uber come back yes and then you were like (laughs) you had lost all ladiness and you were just like you were in a really short skirt and you were just clawing away at the back seat i was just trying to find this shiny pink wallet and his car was brand new there was nothing in that car it like smelled like new car even no that's the one that smelled like feet to me but oh well he had his shoes off but i meant the the actual interior of the car was clean (laughs) jeez that's what it was why why do uber drivers do that he was so nice why well, it's not that he wasn't nice but it smelled like as soon as we got in the car it's like my nostrils begin to flare and i was just like oh my god Paul, what is that we couldn't roll down the windows fast enough I you mean, saw me i was like <laughs> <laughs> we're like we need air give us the air so god if you so he rolled him up as we started to go on the freeway i'm like no <laughs> i'm just so glad he didn't turn on the air conditioning it would have been worse <laughs> it would have just blown us back we're like help so he was so nice to come back and i and it wasn't in there and i was so upset and he said and you're all jamie pull your skirt down i can see your ass i'm like i don't care i was so upset and so he said i can take you back to the aria if you would like and i said i can't i go i'm at an event and if i go i'll miss the entire thing i literally can't miss it i I didn't want to miss it Mm mm-hmm he said, I really believe in this world, all good things come to good people. I know you're going to get your thing back. And I said, you are so nice. And I, and I turned to you, I'm like, do you have any money? <laughs> of course and I you're all, no I have nothing. And I'm like, God damn it. Because I was supposed to have the cash. And I was like, oh, I go, I promise you, I will make sure that you get what's coming to you. I, Paula, please tell me that you gave him a five and then you tipped him. I, I I think I did. Okay, I really good, think I because did. He said he was new. He said he was a new driver. And so I he need you know, anything, you know, I just I I just was so desperate to thank him and I didn't book the Uber. You did. And so and you're like, I don't know how to do this. I'm like, give him the five. I'm I'm sure I did. You did. I mean you were you were able to get in touch with him, so you, you obviously did, you know, leave him a nice review and everything. But uh, so we go to the show and the bar, we got drink tickets with our with our ticket. So I got a double gin and tonic and it was good. They were not holding back on their on their booze. It was great because usually when you get drink tickets, they're not that great. You know. What? Hello. Sorry. What are you doing? (laughs) I was looking at my Uber app to see if I tipped him. (laughs) Did you do it? I don't know. It asked me about Lloyd. So oh, I was Lloyd? just like, oh, Lloyd was great. Oh, it was Boyd. Was it Lloyd or Boyd? It was Lloyd. You kept Lloyd. calling him Boyd. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. 
He was the best Uber driver of the weekend, actually. Pretty much, yeah. I really liked Lloyd. Anyway, so in his Cadillac 300, which was... No, it was his Chrysler 300. Chrysler 300. Yeah, it was nice, though. I liked it. Anyway, um, (laughs) once I realized that I'm like, I'm really panicking over everything being replaceable, I'm good. So he froze the American Express... And I said, you know, losing losing cash and all of that sucks, but it's replaceable. It's replaceable. And yeah. so I calmed down and I said, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have gotten that hysterical. It just scared the crap out of me because I'm not that irresponsible usually. Mm-hmm. And so we enjoyed the show. And every once in a while you turned to me when I could tell that you had lost some interest in the show. And you're all, are you sure you don't want to go back to the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> you asked me twice, but I'm really glad we did it. It was a it was a really it was a really fun little comedy show, and what mm-hmm. was even funner is because everybody got drink tickets. There was a lot of hammered folks there. There were, and it was fun to watch. Man, was it fun to watch though! And it was mostly women. Yeah, they were wobbling all they over the really place. They were really like, I'm like, this is you don't go out often, do you? I'm like, like that lady was just wobbling and she burped. <laughs> I remember. Oh, my God. I remember that. And then she walked in front of the stage and sat down in the front row. And the guy's like, hold on, everyone. Things are getting kind of real down here. Are you all right? <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> She's like, and she didn't acknowledge it. At one point, I saw her. And she had her head on the person's shoulder next to her. Oh, geez. And then at another point, she got up and started wandering around the back of the arena. And I'm like, what is this woman doing? Who is she? I was she like, doesn't is she know. Important? She's just trying to make herself feel better. <laughs> I need to walk this off. Oh, spins. Oh. oh. <laughs> so it was a fun little show, but then it ended. We hung out. We met a couple of people that we really wanted to meet that, that live in Vegas and stuff. And it was really nice. And then we mm-hmm. decided to head back to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And I remember sitting there going, I swear to God. If I was an idiot and left that wallet in the hotel, and you're all Jamie, it's going to be there. <sighs> and sure as shit, there it was on the nightstand. It was there. I was so relieved. I couldn't. It was like the best orgasm I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy. I was positive it was there because you had turned off all the lights before we left and I I wasn't even done doing what I was doing. And then you're like, where's my room key? So I think I had to use my phone flashlight because you wouldn't turn any lights on. Why didn't, why did I do that? I don't know. You were, you didn't want anyone doing anything else. You just wanted to go. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah. You're like, it's so dark. How can you see anything? And I think I literally ran into a chair. You're like, I can't. (laughs) Why did I? I'm like, turn on a light. What am I doing? It was so weird. But you know what? I'm weird. So I just didn't really think anything of it. I was happy to see it. We decided to go back to Fremont Street because we had promised ourselves we were going to go because we had never been before. Yeah, we heard all these great things about it. Yeah, and I'd seen all the cool photos and all that stuff. So we we Uber all the way back to Fremont Street. And um, I had changed because I yes. was like, I'm not wearing this anymore. So I changed into jeans and different boots and stuff. I'm like, because we're not going dancing tonight. And I'm just like, no, I'm not doing this. And I was just so relieved. And let me tell you, I had a white knuckle grip on my my wallet for the rest of the weekend. I never let that thing go. It's never going anywhere. But Ever. you got to see some little light show. I don't know if it was lame or what it was. Well, you decided to do some $1 blackjack tables and stuff. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and watch the roulettes. And there was just a lot of like obliterated drunk people there. When we were walking towards the casino at the Golden Nugget, we walked by a gentleman who I thought was disabled. (laughs) He was walking and we were walking by him and he was trying to focus on me. But I thought he had some serious disability and he was walking. And so I'm like, oh, that's nice that he's walking. And I turn and we, he, as he gets closer, I realize he's inebriated Mm -hmm. and he's walking sideways essentially. (laughs) And he walks by and he's all, (laughs) grunted at me i remember that one and i turned to you and i said did you see that you're like i did he grunted at you and i said what was that he's and i told daryl i go you know what it reminds me of in trading places when dan Aykroyd has hit his bottom and he's in the santa suit and he's eating salmon a big plate a big fillet of salmon that he had stolen from a christmas party oh my god and he takes a big bite of the salmon and there's like beard hair in it and everything and he's all Argh! That's exactly what he was like. 
except without the beard. It was <laughs> no, awful. and then we both got picked up on by the same bouncer. Is that what he was? I thought you said he was a bouncer or he was the one that counted like how many drinks went out. Yes, he was something like that. But he came up to me. I was doing something on my phone. I was either, I think I was still trying to figure out the Uber or something <laughs> like that. I'm still trying to figure out how to how to and, tip Toman. And he came up to me. He's like, so uh, who are you texting? You texting me? And I'm just like, no. Who says that anymore? <laughs> and he had like, he reminded me of Joey Buttafuoco. But yes. he had like purple eyeliner on, and I'm just like, "What are you? What are, what are you?" <laughs> just so when you were you were playing poker or whatever you were, blackjack or whatever it was you were playing, and I went out to, uh, and everybody started going out because all the lights of Fremont Street went out, and there was apparently some amazing light show that they do because it's covered by LED like an LED roof. So I go out, I'm like I'm going to do this cuz I don't like to gamble that often. I did a little bit, but I but I'm not a fan. And so I'm like I'm going to go out and look at this. You're like, "All right, bye." So I go out, I look up and it's, you know, <laughs> it's an alien thing. It's a space <laughs> alien thing, and it's funny to watch people who are clearly on vacation because you video shit that you wouldn't dare video anywhere else. Oh, wow. Look at this. That looks cool. This is so amazing. And so there's a part where there's spaceships like flying through the whole area. And at the same time, because you can zip line down this thing, humans zip line past us and are waving. And I'm like, is this part of the show? <laughs> like, I couldn't tell what I was looking at. Oh, right. It was weird. So that ended. So I turned around and that guy is standing in front of me. Now, what I didn't realize is you really can't walk in that area, this teeny little area, because if, unless you have a cocktail, you can sit there. But if you're not, you're, you can't just wander in off the thing. But I'm like, I just walked out here. I'm turning around and walking right back in because you're right there. And if I have to go around, I will get lost. So right. I walk in and he looks at me and he goes, hey, I got a friskia. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> and he goes, it's part of the job. And I said, No. No, it isn't. And I walk right by him. I'm like, really? This, this Does this work for you? What is this? Are you a character? Come on. You're counting cocktails in plastic cups. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I have to say, overall, I did not like Fremont Street. And I don't ever need to go back. No, no. <laughs> the only positive thing about it is the the table limits and well, yeah like the roulette limits and stuff for that kind of stuff yeah it's a lot cheaper than the bigger hotels i mean if, if you're really going to vegas just to gamble then yeah i guess you would definitely head down that way but i mean it, it's yeah. not it's almost not even worth it to be honest well it, it, it wasn't to me but i didn't want to be a total asshole you'd put up with so much so far <laughs> so I didn't really want to be like, you know what? I hate it. Let's go. You know, so I was you're like 10 more minutes. I'm like, all right, 10 minutes. And I stood around. And I stared. The problem is that casinos, no matter how small, they don't like people standing around. They're not yeah. fans. So I got buzzed by two or three floor managers because I didn't even have a cocktail. Like I didn't yeah. have anything. But I really was so burned out from the whole wallet debacle that I just didn't really know what to what I wanted to do anymore because I felt like it just completely ruined the evening and I felt really bad about it. Like I truly have guilt about it because it was so dumb and I did it didn't ruin the show or anything because it was a nice distraction, but it just you know, going back to the hotel from Fremont Street, it was like 30 minutes round trip. Yeah. I mean, it took a lot of time and I felt really bad about that, but you were cool. You know, you were super cool about it, which was nice. I didn't realize how late it was. Yeah. Like, we didn't get back until, like, almost 3 a.m. And then we went downstairs to get food, along with everyone else. Like, everyone in the world was in line at that one, right. the one place that was open. The one little teeny pastry joint. Yeah, and there's, because, I mean, there is room service, but it's not, It we would wait another hour. We wouldn't get, we wouldn't get our food till almost 4 a.m., and I'm like, no, and then... There were a couple of places that you could order and pick up, which a lot of people were doing. Um, but we just wanted, you know, we're just like, let's just do this. And that's when we started people watching again. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and that's when we decided, like, what was the current fashion for men? And Well, it's clearly know. button up Cameron shirts from Modern Family. Is that what those are? The one with the, all the flowers on yes. them? Yes. Okay. Every single human male had it on 
every guy it was like the uniform i'm like what's with all these flowery shirts i don't and know. not like hawaii flowers but no. like these little paisley or like baby peonies or carnations all kinds of bizarre Something flowery shirts Yes. So what was interesting is we get home, we eat our food, and then we wake up the next morning, we ordered room service, which was, which was the best meal of our weekend, actually. It was good. It was so nice. And the lady that brought it was super sweet and all that stuff. We were like, all right, next day, fresh start. So we go <laughs> and we walk the strip for a long time. <laughs> we ended up walking eight miles. Oh, my God. And most of that was just walking around trying to find things. Yeah. And you're like, these casinos are really big. (laughs) I'm like, each hotel is large. I mean, yeah, they're probably at least like three miles wide. Oh, my God. They're huge. And so then we go to Planet Hollywood, which had all the stuff that both of you, you and I wanted to see. There is a Mm. little alcoholic slushy place called Shiver. And they mm-hmm. sell these things called bling bottles. They're the size of a, a champagne magnum, and they fill it up with an alcoholic slushy, margarita, daiquiri, or pina colada. And there's other another one I can't remember. Well, I can't do rot gut margarita tequila, which I know that's what they would be using. So mm-hmm. I got the pina colada. It was awesome. It was so cool. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. And I have this huge magnum. I loved it. And I walked around. You should have gotten one, Paula. It really made it much more pleasant walking around well, it probably would have helped because when we got back to our room remember when i took off my boot my sock was all bloody <laughs> your your shoe was full of blood <laughs> and i had yeah. realized that my pinky toe had been stabbing my other toe you're like oh no and i'm like oh my god <laughs> what, are, what are we at war <laughs> jesus and you're like no wonder you were complaining and i'm just like i kept telling you that my feet were hurting <laughs> We did get to go, We but we got through Planet Hollywood. We, you got to see the Gordon Ramsay restaurant that you wanted, yes. that Ryan wanted to see. Um, and then that stupid asshole map guy, he totally gave us the runaround. Did you realize that? We were nowhere near He said, oh yeah, just place. go through the casino and just follow it that way. We went the total opposite way. He wanted us through the casino. If we had just turned around and gone back, it was right there. It was right there. I don't even think that restaurant was even near a casino. It wasn't. It was at the entrance of what we walked by. We must have walked by and didn't even see it. I was so mad at that asshole. I I almost wanted to go back over there and say, hey, dick, thanks a lot. I was so angry. We we ended up going at the escalator of this place and ran into some weird tattoo auto show. What was that? I don't even know. And it was like dark in there. It was like a trade show for like, you know, people, different employers and not, 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 not the public, not patrons. Right. No, it was, it was so bizarre. I said, what is this place? It's dark in here. Why are there cars and tattoo guns? It's so strange. It was so weird. That was funny though. But we, at least we found the elevator. So we're at the Bellagio and you get Starbucks. I'm like, God, oh, the Bellagio is really nice. It's so crowded there. Yeah, it was. Oh, actually, before we hit the Bellagio, we walked by the water, which was really pretty. Mm -hmm. We got on the guest list for Jewel, which is the club at the Aria, which is where we were staying. And I was really glad because then we can just walk right in and we don't have to wait in line, which is why I did it. And so I'm like, all right, cool. And we we truly believed we were going clubbing Saturday night. (laughs) We really we we really believed it. So we're like not that far away from the from the little tram that takes you in between the Aria, the MGM and the Bellagio. And I said, it's right over here. You're like, Jamie, I'm getting an Uber. <laughs> I told you I'm not walking anymore. And I said, Paula, it's right here. It wasn't right here. But we did get there finally. And then we get. But even the- when we got there, we still had to walk like another mile. I know. And so we get on the <laughs> tram and the thing is full. And every single man is got their ass in a seat. And we are the only people standing. Two girls. Mm-hmm. I, you know, that bothers me so much. I can't even. It's just the way of the world. I just said, wow, room full of gentlemen. How nice. I mean, I said said they were gentlemen. They're just obviously slobs. Well, it just pissed me off. And I said, you know, if Daryl was with us, he would have gotten up and said, here, please take my seat. I would have looked at him. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what is that? What is that? So archaic. It's rude. 
It's like, get your ass up. You know, I think it's a parent thing. I think yeah. parents don't teach their sons to be gentlemen. And here's the other thing, Paula. I would have declined the seat. I would have said, no, thank you. But I mean, would it have been, would it have killed anyone to just say, would you like my seat, miss? God, it yeah. made me mad. Just take a note. If your husband or boyfriend or partner or whatever offers your seat, you got a good egg. I mean, yeah. that, that part is good. I mean, they may be a dick in other areas, but to offer up a seat in a crowded area is that is a good thing. Or if you have a son, teach your son manners. and Yeah, or teach him. It's like when you're in a crowded place and you see women standing and you've got a seat, offer it. They, may, they right. can decline it, but they should offer it. I even offer my seat to older ladies. I do, too. I absolutely do. And sometimes they take it, sometimes they don't. Or women with babies or something oh, like that. Oh, for sure, for sure. So we finally get back to the hotel and walk another mile <laughs> to the room. And you're like... I have to lay down for a minute. That's okay. <laughs> now, what we realized was we were up for 21 hours because we had uh, traveled and we both had gotten up super duper early and then traveled and then and then immediately jumped into an Uber and went to our show and then went to Fremont Street and then we had Ubered back and forth because of my stupid wallet. So we had done quite a bit. Yeah. Friday was really busy. It was insane. And so I but I remember going, OK, it's Saturday night. I've got us on the guest list for Jewel. We're going to get slutted out and we're going to go to this club and it's going to be super fun. Plus, there was a fight that night. So we thought we'll go we'll go find a fight yep. or we'll go find a place that's showing the fight. We'll come back, get ready, go party and 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 call it a weekend. We were super stoked about it. We were excited. So I take a bath in that luxurious glass bathroom and it was amazing. And by side note, Vegas, where our hotel room was, we could see into all the other rooms that had their windows open, their sh- their shades open. Not one couple did I see have sex. No right. blowjobs. No naked. Nothing. nothing. I was, Leave your blinds open. I was so disappointed because I knew they weren't going to see anything in our room. First of all, we were we were way at the top, so they couldn't see. Number one and number two, it's too. We're not doing anything. You know, really. we weren't going to do anything. I mean, that's what we we were laughing because we were thinking the guys across the way would be like, ooh, two two girls in one room. And they're sitting What's on the bed happen? together. <laughs> yeah. The other it. one's taking a bath. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was very disappointed. No, no, there was nothing good to see. I was really surprised. I'm like, I saw maids changing table, you know, changing sheets. <laughs> I saw a girl blowing her hair dry. I'm like, okay. This is dumb. I, I can't believe this is Vegas, people. I should see swinging from the chandeliers, coitus, or <laughs> at least a guy watching porn on his bed. Something. You know, not even a jack off, nothing. I was so disappointed in you. I couldn't believe it. So I'm taking a bath. My feet are killing me. I mean, they are killing me. So I'm taking a bath, soaking my body, going, I'm going to feel a ton better after I do this. So I take the hot bath. I get out, and my feet are like, <sighs> They're like, you're doing nothing. So I get all dressed and I'm like, okay, and you're still sleeping. Yes. You probably slept like two and a half hours. That shouldn't surprise anyone. That's usually <laughs> how long I sleep. <laughs> so I I get dressed. I put on my glam makeup because I'm like, as soon as she wakes up, we're going to go. Because the club doesn't even open until 1030. So we have tons of time. So I said, but I'm going to go down and find this UFC fight at one of the sports book rooms or bars or whatever. And then I'll I'll text her and say, hey come down here and I, you know, we can watch the fight. And so I go down, not one place in our hotel is showing the UFC fight. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. The closest place was back at Planet Hollywood. And I knew we were not walking back over there. It wasn't possible. Our legs wouldn't allow it. There was no, no. way. You would have said it. And I'd be like, I'm just going to stay here. You're like, well, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy, your, enjoy your wings. I'm not going. Right. <laughs> So I go back upstairs and I find an illegal feed on Twitter and it's in Japanese, but at least we were able to watch it. It was really clear, too. Yeah, it was really clear. So we watched the UFC fight illegally on Twitter at the Aria Hotel, which was fine. And we looked at each other and I said, Paula, I want to go dancing so bad, but I don't think I can put on sexy shoes. I don't think they would even fit at this point. And you're all. And then I, I asked you. I said, "Do you think they'll allow flip flops?" And you said, "I don't think that's part of the dress code. It's not. I'm pretty sure you can put them on later, but when you go in, you have to look pretty good." 
So we're, we're running out of time, so we'll probably continue recapping on Sunday's show. Yeah, I think so. But really quick, with the whole mess with getting picked up late at the at the airport when we got arrived in Vegas, to the fact that the room service was supposed to be complimentary. We shouldn't have paid anything for that. And it was over $100, which I thought oh was my expensive. God. That's <laughs> for, ridiculous for, for pancakes and eggs. Yeah, it was expensive. And a fruit plate? <laughs> well, the, yeah, exactly. Although that fruit plate was really good. Um, and we drank all that coffee. We could not. We were mainlining that coffee. Oh, my God. Um, but so, you couldn't get a damn glass of water in the place <laughs> we'll talk about your camel ways on sunday <laughs> yes we will but i got so of course i was interacting with daryl who was which we will also talk on sunday about how he suffered while we were gone he was <laughs> god i've never i don't know i don't even know how to explain how heart sick he was but it was sweet for sure, but and I didn't. I felt no guilt, so don't even you know. It's not even that, but he just it was really sweet, missed. but almost alarming at the same time. It was a bit shocking, but anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that on Sunday. So we the ride to the airport was great. We'll talk about our plane ride home, which was like a giant dirty diaper. But uh, Daryl had responded to the fact that the guy was late picking us up, and how they charged us for the room service, and they took off like almost $250 off of the bill. Whoa. They were, and then on top of it, Paula, they just actually sent him an email saying, hey, we hope you enjoyed your experience. Was there anything, you know, we can improve on? He goes, um, yeah. And he started bullet pointing everything. And they replied all. So we saw the email they sent to the management. They're like, hey, is anybody dealing with this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, it's been sitting in the queue for a while. And we got that email. We got CC'd on their private email. So they tried to rescind it twice, which it was too late because Daryl had opened it. And so he replied. He goes, yeah, thanks for the private email. I mean, it was just such a colossal fuck up on their part. Oh, my God. So they they were like, oh, my God, we're so sorry. And we're taking off all the extras. You know, you're not paying for anything extra. And please come back so we can make it up to you and all that stuff. So I'm like, hell, yeah, I'll go back. Dang. I know, right? So anyway, I just I wanted to let you know that they apologized for fucking up our whole experience. It didn't ruin anything. I don't know about you, Paula, but I laughed so much when you and I were there. Yeah, I had a great time. I had a great time, too. I mean, we didn't get to do all the typical stuff that you see in movies, but we made so much fun. I mean, we had so much fun. I Can I tell you that I almost started crying when I was curling your hair? <laughs> You did. It was so sweet. I haven't done your hair since you were a little, little girl. It was so cool. And I remember that you're my baby sister when I was doing it. And I'm like, this is exactly why I wanted to do this. So we could so we could bond, have a good time. You know, we see each other, but it's only like a couple hours here and there. So it was like to spend that much time together again was amazing. I I, that's why I really wanted our other sister to go. But it just didn't work out. And and you (laughs) you were like. Jamie, I'm kind of glad that she didn't come <laughs> because you're like, well, can you imagine? She'd be like, this show better be worth it. People think we're whores. <laughs> I know. My feet hurt. <laughs> I am, she'd be like, Jamie, Fremont Street, really? What the fuck is this? What are we, hobos? Get out of here. We got to get out of here. Get a goddamn limo. These drinks better be cheap. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I told you, I'm like, we would have just given her all of our drink tickets. Like, go, <laughs> all six go, of them. go. <laughs> Anyway, so we'll we'll continue discussing Vegas. Plus, I want to hear how your kids did while you were gone. We have so many other awkward moments that we didn't even discuss that we'll discuss on Sunday. Yes. Just so much. But but we had such a good time. And of course, just like typical, neither one of us took en- a- enough pictures. No, I, I didn't take any. Well, I took some pictures, but there's there's one picture of me. <laughs> I realize, but I'm actually happy with that. It's so well. First of all, I mean, you should do more selfies. You're like, oh look, I was there, and I'm like, hey, no one told you not to take pictures. <laughs> it's not my fault. I just don't do good with selfies. Knowing me, I'd take it, you know, in front of the window, and I'd be all, you know, <laughs> black, and then everything would be bright in the back. Yes, so. exactly. So anyway, um, so glad we went. We'll definitely be doing it again. Um, I it's, think. I think so too. I think, I think that'd be a good time. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap for this week. I uh, hope everybody has a good Wednesday. Uh, we are so happy to be back with you, even though you didn't really miss anything. <laughs> we will continue more on Sunday. So until then, 
Have a good rest of your week. Bye. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.